precious to God that he takes the time to count us. Every 10 years, the census counts everyone in the United States. Being counted in the census will shape your future and the future of every community across our nation for years to come. Participation in the census is a right and a civic responsibility for both citizen and non-citizen. I'm going to participate in the 2020 census because we must be counted. We have fought for the right to be counted, and we must still fight for the right to be counted. Listen, I have a strong conviction that every one of us deserves to be counted, that we have equal opportunities at roads, at hospitals, at financial reimbursement in the areas that will enhance our schools, develop our children, and move forward our agenda. None of that can happen if you don't register for this year's 2020 census. I want you to avoid the setup to not be counted. And in order to do that, you must just take a few minutes to be disciplined and fill out the census. It can be life-changing. It's bigger than you. It's about your children. It's about your neighbors. It's about us as a people. Do it and watch how things begin to change. The census is more than just a count. As a person created in the image of God, you matter. Your participation in the census will determine how nearly $800 billion in federal funds are used to help us, our family and neighbors during times of need. The census helps us hold our government accountable. Census information is used to make sure we are equally represented in Congress and in state and local elections. By completing the census, you are raising your hand and adding your voice to America's voice. Don't let fear or false information prevent you from completing the census. The census is private and confidential and cannot be shared with any other person or government agency. Faith leaders will partner with legal experts to ensure against any misuse of your data. There are three ways to respond to the 2020 census online, by phone, or by mail. Completing your survey takes 10 minutes. If you don't respond, census takers will visit your home to ensure everyone is counted. For more information, visit www.2020census.gov. We know the power we have. Let's use that power by being faithful agents to bring into being a society that ensures a more prosperous, secure, and stable America. That makes room for all. So on April the 1st, respond and be counted.
we can make it financially through the pandemic. And there are many resources that we have in our community, even other businesses that we can support that support us. And we're asking all of the businesses, all of those who own businesses here at First African Baptist Church, connect with First African, please get your information into our church office so we can include you in this showcase on Thursday and we can include you in future things that we're doing. We want to support our businesses as our businesses continue to support all of us. And you know, our focus for this month, our focus for this month, our focus through all the months are really evangelism. But we're focusing this month, especially while we're in quarantine, and it's going to continue to be winning the loss for Christ. Everything we're saying, everything we're doing should begin and end with our love for God and our love for each other. Loving each other enough to ask others to come into a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior. Our focus and our goal this month is for every disciple of First African Baptist Church to win at least one person to Christ. Every disciple to win at least one person to Christ. We're asking you to do that. We're knowing that God has empowered us to do just that. Don't expect just the pastor, the deacons, and others to do it. Expect you to do what God has called you to do in such a time as this. Every disciple winning at least one. And then I ask that you to join me in, uh, in October for a very special COP, virtual COP program. The classes will be held. Uh, it's going to be a broadcast uh, from, actually from home. It's virtual. But it's hosted by the Thankful Baptist Church. So we ask that we please be a part of that. Sign up for that. The office can tell you how to sign up for that. Keep in mind also that the National Baptist Convention will be convening on this week. And we ask those who would like to go online and share with that, let the church office know. You can share as a part of our National Baptist Convention, USA Incorporated. We're so, so very excited about that. We have a thank you card that I think express your concerns, my concerns, all of our sentiments. Let me read the thank you card we received. You don't do it for the glory. Dear church family, thanks to all who have contributed to the worship experience extraordinary since the stay at home occurred. Thanks for all your talents and expertise to make all things happen as ordinary as possible. Much love and be safe. Thanks so much for all you do. We will get through this. God has it. This is a call from Sister Lorita Taylor. Thanking all of the staff and all those who work so hard, those who work the cameras, those who work the sound, those who work everything, but McGuire, Sister Robin Brown, uh, Minister Bozier, I know I started calling her name, not only about our music staff, everybody. We want to thank everybody who's done everything you could during this time of pandemic to still move forward and give God all the glory. Thank you also now for your consistent giving. We've been doing our part to have worship experience where you can experience with us. That's why we do it right here in the building. Others come to the building and that we're so loved and cared for, but we're grateful to God for how he allowed those who were enslaved to build this building, 1859. And it's been our responsibility just to keep it up. And I want to thank those of you who've been contributing to our building fund. I want to thank those who've been paying your tithes and offerings. And we're going to ask right now, Please go ahead and give to Givelify, G-I-B-E-L-I-F-Y, Givelify. You can give to Givelify. You can also give by mailing your contributions to First African Baptist Church, 23 Montgomery Street, Savannah, Georgia, 31401. Thank you so much. And keep in mind, we want to thank you for giving. Don't stop. Don't stop. Keep giving. We thank those who are paying their tithes. And if you have not been tithing, consider it. God will bless you even in the midst of what we're going through. Consider paying your tithes and offerings. Also, go ahead and give toward Bible study and all the other things that we're having. Don't stop giving. We thank God for you. Thank God for you giving. Now we ask that we will be in prayer for all of those, particularly we're in prayer for those in our western states of the United States of America, including California, Oregon, Washington, uh, all of those experiencing these wildfires all along there, homes being lost, businesses being lost, people being displaced, not having a place to stay. We, as we keep them in prayer. Those who have been devastated by hurricanes and by the, the storms and wind blowing, we ask we keep them in our prayers for the loss of their hand. Those who have had losses through every kind of way, all throughout the United States, all throughout the world, we care and we're asking and praying for them. 
Especially also we're praying for those in our church family who've had loved ones to go from labor to reward, people you love and care for, who've passed this past week and even beyond. We're praying with and for you. And for those who are recovering from whatever illness, we're praying with you right now. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. And God will guide us, keep us, strengthen us, and bless us even as we continue in worship unto him. O oh God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come, our shelter from the stormy blast, and our eternal home. God, we come humbly before you right now in the precious and powerful name of Jesus. Thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy. We ask now, God, that you would direct us, guide us, keep us, strengthen us. We recognize that you are God all by yourself. We recognize you are holy. We recognize that you are omnipresent, that you are omniscient, that you are omnipotent, God. We recognize your power, your grace, your love, and your mercy. We come this day because we've sinned, we've come short, we haven't been everything you want us to be. We have not reached the mark. We're still striving for the mark, for the high calling in Christ Jesus. We come, God, asking that you direct our hearts, our minds, our souls. We thank you for what you've already done. We thank you for how you blessed us, how you kept us, how you've been bringing us, even in the midst of this pandemic. We thank you, God, for an opportunity to reach out to others who may not know you, that they may come to know you. God, we ask now that you will comfort those who have loved ones to go from labor to reward, that you would comfort, bless, and keep and strengthen, as you constantly remind us that this world is not our home, that we're all a stranger passing through, and one day we too will have to leave this world to give up time for eternity. We ask you to bless, God, and keep. Be with those, God, who are, who are experiencing any and every type of illness. We're praying for healing in their bodies, in their minds, in their very souls, God, that you heal and strengthen. And then for everything that everyone's going through, God, we ask that you would guide us, direct us, be in us, strengthen us, use us in a mighty way that your will can be done through us. Bless us for every situation that's on our minds and our hearts right now. Situations I may not have mentioned, but yet you know they're very real in all of our lives. We pray for the very climate in which we live, that you guide us, God, help us to rise up, trust the leadership throughout this nation, throughout this world, to lead as you would have them lead. Again, we thank you for this day. Bless us, God, and keep us. Bless this worship experience that everyone who hears and participates will be able to receive everything you have for them. We will give you the praise, the honor, the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
for absolutely no reason. They don't have to be in hiding. They don't have to wear socks to the beach and at the pool. With just a little care and some professional, professional instruction, what looked disastrous could really become beautiful. So, so what are you saying? I'm just saying it's time to get those feet right. It's time for a pedicure. Well, just what is a pedicure? What, what is it? A pedicure is a cosmetic treatment of the feet and toenails. There are many types of pedicures that range in method, but a classic or regular ped pedicure generally takes place in a nail salon rather than a spa. As a customer, you will sit in a comfortable chair and likely receive the following treatment. A warm soak, a warm foot soak to help soften and relax the skin and toenails. Then a foot scrub to remove the calluses and flaky dry foot skin. Usually done with a pumice stone or foot file or some other tool. Then moisturizer is applied via a short foot and lower leg massage. Yeah, a massage to just get it all the moisture right in. Then a careful trim and file of the toenails. A nail cuticle treatment that includes cuticles being pushed back and the application of nourishing cuticle oil. And then, of course, optional, there could be the application of base cloth polish, toenail polish, um, but sometimes we do. Now, now, most pedicures may go between 30 minutes to 60 minutes, depending on the condition of the feet and whether or not you choose polish. But, you know, some might go 90 minutes, you know, hour, hour and a half. But, but whatever it takes to get the feet to become beautiful. Whether you believe it or not, you today have been set up and you have arrived to this spot. You have arrived to this power. Mm. And you're in line just in time for a divine pedicure. You have entered into his presence and so we don't want you to leave until you have beautiful feet. Seeing that we all want to please the one who created us for greatness and has given us an opportunity to do his will, let's look at how our present situation and circumstances can be transformed into beautiful situations following a timely and divinely appointed pedicure. Tell someone in the chat, tell someone in the live feed, you can have beautiful feet. Yeah, take that and encourage somebody. You can have beautiful feet. I see you, put it in. You can have beautiful feet. Beautiful feet are healthy feet. Yeah, yes, we, we want to have beautiful feet because beautiful feet are now healthy feet. Uh, feet that have been, been trimmed, feet that have have, have the toenails trimmed, feet that have looked at the conditions of the feet to make sure that there are no other underlying circumstances or situations. Yeah, beautiful feet are healthy feet. And then understand that healthy feet are useful feet. Yes, healthy feet are useful feet. You can go more places if your feet are healthy. Yeah, you can be more useful if your feet are healthy. And useful feet can always give great rewards. Yes, you want useful feet. You want to be able to go that you can receive everything that there is for you to receive. We don't want or need beautiful feet to walk around bragging about how beautiful our feet are. No, no, no. We need beautiful feet for the purpose of having and being useful feet. Yes. Whether you realize it or not, we are in the midst of divine pedicure. Yes, we are in the midst of divine pedicure. But what do you mean? Well, look at what happens in the pedicure and look what happens in our lives. We have been soaking in hot water in this world for quite some time. 
As a people, we've been in hot water with physical, mental, and social injustice since 1619. Since the day you were born, the Bible lets us know we were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. And if you hadn't felt the heat of oppression in your life, you have had to begin to feel the heat of global warming, at least through the steady effects of global warming all around this planet. But if in no other circumstance, we all have to admit in the midst of the heat and the soaking of the coronavirus in our society now, we are being prepared for something much greater than we have ever participated before. Yes, yes, yes. Not only are we being soaked to become beautiful, yeah, we are being scrubbed by a pumice stone in order to remove the calluses from us. Too many of us have callous hearts, hardened hearts, that keep us from loving as we ought love, that keep us from giving as we ought give, to keep us from living as we are live and being who God created us. There are too many hard-hearted and hard-headed folk. God loves us. God cares for us. And we need the pumice stone. We need the stone of life. We need the stone that, or shall I say, the stone that gives life, which can scrub away all of the callous on our hearts. Yes, this stone, this stone that the builders rejected, this rock that's in a weary land. One song says, on Christ the solid rock I stand, all of the ground is sinking sand. Yes, yes, yes. Can you feel Christ working in your heart? Can you feel Christ working through your mind? Can you feel Christ working in your life? Can you feel Christ through the trials, through the tribulations, and the situations in life you're going through? Everything we're going through, never to make us bitter, but always to make us better. And we should thank Him even in the midst of going through a divine pedicure. Soaking and scrubbing, scrubbing and soaking, just to have beautiful feet. Soaking in trials and scrubbing through tribulations. But your divine pedicure is not over yet. As the calluses come off, as we are softened by the situations in life, there's still one more step. And I want you to understand, as you're going through what you're going through, God is just working on you so he can work in you and then work through you. He needs his will to be done. So he's calling upon us to take take good advantage of what we're going through through the soaking and the scrubbing of life so we can get to what he wants us to be. The next step after the soaking and the scrubbing comes the massaging. We are massaged by God's word. The reason why we've been in hot water, the reason we have been scrubbed and rubbed sometimes the wrong way and at the wrong time. The reason it seems like we are always in difficult situations is so the word of God can be massaged into our lives. Mm. Once we get massaged in God's word, we will have a message for all people. I say once we get massaged, we will have a message. The message will be like fire our bones. You can't help but tell it everywhere you go. And you go and go, you must. We must go. You can go and tell it because you too now have beautiful feet. Useful feet to go tell it everywhere even in this pandemic. Especially in this pandemic. You have beautiful, healthy, useful feet. You can go and tell it. Well, why? Why do I have to go? Why do I have to go and tell it? Why do I have to tell it? I'm glad you asked. It's in our text. Beginning with verse 13 in Romans chapter 10. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him 
of whom they have not heard. If they haven't heard, they wouldn't have the opportunity to believe. They have to hear. And notice what it says. And how are they to hear unless, uh, how are they to hear without someone preaching? Somebody got to tell it. And then verse 15. And how are they to preach unless they are sent? Oh, my brothers and my sisters, you're being sent today. Especially if you're a disciple of First Avenue Baptist Church. Because we're being sent out to win at least one soul for Christ. Not, don't have to stop with one. At least one. Deacon, uh, Deacon Jones, Deacon Dwayne Jones have already, he, he just kind of got a start on us. He's already gotten four to come. And we're looking for all of us to be the disciples, to be the preacher God is calling us to be. How beautiful, verse 15, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach good news. Well, how would it hear? It says, faith comes from hearing. Verse 17, faith, faith comes through hearing and hearing through the word of God. It's not just talking. It's talking what God has given us to say. It's not just talking. It's talking using the word of God because there's power in the word of God. The Messiah we receive is from and through the word of God. The world needs to hear God's message. The world needs to hear it and you and I need to tell it. So go tell it. Let me say it again. Go tell it with your beautiful feet. You have to tell it to your family. You have to tell it to your friends. You have to tell it to those you like. You have to tell it to those who you don't like. You have to tell it to those who've heard it before and those who haven't heard it. You have to tell it on Facebook. You have to tell it on Instagram. You have to tell it on YouTube. You have to tell it in Zoom. You have to tell it in every conference call you get in all week long, all day long, every day. You got to tell it in every chat room. You got to tell it on Twitter. You got to tell it through the postcard. You got to tell it through an email. You got to tell it to the telemarketers who call you when you least expect it and you don't want to talk with them. You don't want to hear them. You want to just hang up on them. No, just tell them. Tell it to them also. And you ain't got to worry. They'll, they'll hang up. But just tell them. Tell it to the Uber driver. Tell it to the Lyft driver. Tell it to the delivery person. Tell it by writing a note, letting them know. Tell it to everybody you see. Tell it at a distance to those who see you when you go out and when you go about. Make sure you tell it. Oh, I hear you, 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 I hear y'all saying it. Tell what, Pastor? Tell them the good news. Let the world hear you tell the good news. Yes. The world has plenty of bad news to tell. The world has plenty of sad news to tell. But you tell them the good news. Well, what is that, Pastor? Oh, you know it. If you've been to First Avenue Baptist Church more than half a Sunday, you know it. Tell them the good news that Jesus came through 42 generations. Tell them that he loved you. Tell them that he loved them. Tell them that he went about doing good. Tell them that Jesus fed the hungry, that he healed the sick. Tell them that he gave sight to the blind. Tell them that he came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Tell them what the Bible says. Right, the very scripture that we put on the doors of this building. When we let the world know that we have gone fishing, we're not assembling in this building, but we've gone to tell a dying world that we serve a living Savior. You can tell them the scripture that's on the door if you can't think of anything else to tell them. And that's John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You get to tell them that he loved us so much that of all the good he did, they ridiculed him. They called him everything but a child of God. But he kept on doing good. You can tell them that he was in the upper room with his disciples. He broke the bread and blessed it. He took the fruit of the vine and blessed it and gave it to them and said he wouldn't do it again till they did it anew in the kingdom. You can tell them that he went out into the garden of Gethsemane and he prayed. He prayed for all of us in a very special way. He even prayed that this cup might pass from him. But then he prayed a prayer that each one of us need to hear. He prayed a prayer that in the midst of what we're going through, 
like he was going through at that particular time. He said, Father, not my will, but your will be done. What would happen if every last one of us with beautiful feet would say, not the way I want it, God, not the way I'm thinking about it, but what is it that you want? How do you want me to live? What do you want me to do? And Jesus said, let your will be done. They arrested him and took him from judgment hall to judgment hall. Tell them that as he went from judgment hall to judgment hall, they whipped him all night long. Tell them they took him up to God, God was healed, put nails in his hands, nails in his feet, according to thorns on his head. Tell them that he hung on the cross from the sixth to the ninth hour. Tell them that he died. He died for you. He died for me. They took him off the, took off the cross, placed him in a bottle too. Tell them he stayed there all night Friday. Tell them he stayed there all day Saturday. Tell them he stayed there all night Saturday night. I would tell them that early on that Sunday morning, he got up from the grave with power, power over the grave, victory over death. Tell them he ascended into heaven, sent back the Holy Spirit. You got to tell them the good news. Tell them how he loved us. Tell them how he cared for us. Why tell them that? Why tell them that? Because the Bible says in Romans 10 and 9, it's part of our text today, that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, the Bible says you shall be, you will be saved. Hallelujah. If we tell the good news, men, women, boys, and girls will come to know who Jesus is. We'll come to know what Jesus has done for us. We'll come to know how God has loved us so much. He's given his all. If you just confess it with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God is raised from the dead, you shall be saved. Let's get up and get our beautiful feet. We'll get up, get on our beautiful feet and go tell the good news Everywhere we go. And maybe someone right now who's listening. Someone who's experiencing this worship experience. And saying, I need the Lord in my life. I do believe that God loves me. I have sinned. I've messed up. I haven't been everything I ought to be. And listen, all of us have sinned and come short. Not just you. All of us have sinned and come short. And the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. So we can tell God right now, God, I've sinned, I've messed up, I need you in my life. Please come into my life. Help me to be what you want me to be. Help me to have beautiful feet and go tell others what a great and awesome God you are. If you're here today and you're paying attention today and everything that we're saying, you can hear what we're saying, you believe in your heart, the gospel has been preached and it's going to be preached from everybody who's listening today. God will get the glory. But I'll pray a prayer with you right now. You can repeat this prayer after me. If this is what you believe as I pray it, I want you right now to take time and say, Lord, I need you in my life. Just pray this prayer with me if you believe the words I'm saying. And I'm going to say it slow enough so you can repeat after me so you can receive the Lord into your life. If you say I believe, you can receive. Let's pray this prayer. Father God, I have sinned. I have not been all I should be. I am sorry for my sins. I want to turn from my sins. I believe in my heart Jesus died for my sins and rose from the grave. I'm willing to trust you, God, all the days of my life. Holy Spirit, come into my life. And help me to be what you want me to be. I will tell others that you saved me. Thank you for saving me right now in the name of Jesus. I pray. Have your way, God. Amen and amen. If you accepted Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, let us know. Just call us in the church. 912-233-6597. Leave a message. Contact any other disciple of First Apple, let us know. 
we would love to have you be a part of our fellowship, but even more important, we would love and thank God for you being a part of Christ's fellowship, being a part of the body of Christ. That's what you've done when you give your life to Christ. God loves you. God cares for you. And there are so many beautiful feet out there right now that's going to spread God's message all over this world. And we say to God with the glory. Don't forget to give to Giblify. Don't forget uh, to give even by mailing your contributions to First African Baptist Church, 23 Montgomery Street, Savannah, Georgia, 31401. Don't forget to be with us on Thursday night at 6.30 for our very special, all of the soap showcases are special, but be with us on the Stewardship Financial um, Special Showcase on this Thursday at 6.30. And we're just so grateful, grateful for our, our Sunday school with Minister Bolger at 9 o'clock every Sunday morning. Grateful for all who participate and help us get the work done that God calls us to do. We're going to win the loss for Christ. We're doing this. And we thank God for your efforts. Please again, don't forget to support and participate with the 2020 Census. Go ahead and ask somebody. Have they completed it? If they haven't, tell them. Now is a great time to do it. Let them know that they make a difference in all of our society. We thank God for you. Thank God for what he's doing and has done in all of our lives. Let us pray. God, again, we thank you. We love you. We adore you. We thank you for those who have given their lives to you on this day and ask that you strengthen, guide, direct, keep them. Let us be of help to them that they can grow in you and go for you to tell others how wonderful and great you are. Bless us now. Strengthen us in all we say and do. And now we ask that the grace of God, the love of Jesus, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit would rest rule in the Bible now, henceforth, and forevermore, as we go, let the people of God say amen and praise God. Hi, my name is Shalina Cook Jones, and I have a really important message for you today. Every year, our government and elected officials spend time making decisions about very precious resources. Some of the things they might consider are transportation, public schooling, where recreation centers and parks are going to go, and how hospitals and emergency rooms are going to be staffed. These are very important decisions, and that's why I am asking you to complete the 2020 U.S. Census. It doesn't take a lot of time, and it's very easy. You can complete it on your phone, on your computer, you can submit it by mail, however you do it, just do it. There are $675 billion up for grabs this time, and that is a lot of money to waste. So if you don't do it for yourself, do it for the generations of children that will be coming behind you during the next 10 years. Do it for the kids, do it for the culture, do it for our community. Stand up, represent, and be counted. My name is Shalina Cook-Jones, and I approve this message. Constitution and comes in a questionnaire that counts everyone who lives at your address on April 1st. The data can be used to inform funding for services like fire stations, schools, clinics, and representation that affect your community. 
Shape your future. Start here. Visit 2020census.gov.